Hey everybody, I was scrolling through social media last week and ran into an article that I thought would be of interest to the history-based enthusiasts that subscribe to this channel. The headline is, Beads found in 3,400-year-old Nordic graves were made by King Tut's glassmaker. The story is four years old, but it got reprinted or re-uploaded to another website this month. I have included a link to one of those websites in the description below. I want to give you a rundown of what the article is about, but also to put it in an American context as well. The article stated, One of the blue glass beads was found with a Bronze Age woman buried in Olby, Denmark, in a hollowed oak coffin. The woman was wearing a sun disc, a smart string skirt decorated with tinkling small bronze tubes, and an overarm bracelet made of amber beads. Clearly, she had been quite a smart and potentially wealthy woman. Another one of these beads was found as part of a necklace and a separate burial site for another woman. All 23 of the blue beads were analyzed using plasma spectrometry, which is a technique that enables comparison of trace elements in the beads without damaging or destroying them, while still offering plenty of information. The results of the analysis show that the blue beads buried with the woman actually originated from the same glass workshop in Amarna that adorned King Tutankhamun at his funeral in 1323 BCE. King Tut's golden death mask contains stripes of blue glass in the headdress, as well as in the inlay of his false beard. This proves that there was some sort of trade link between the two areas at that time. This is an incredible archaeological find, and we need to remember that trade routes were so much more advanced than we give them credit for. Now let's put that in an American context. In October 2017, I visited four national park units in southern Ohio, and the final one I journeyed to was the Hopewell Culture National Historical Park. The complex of mounds were impressive, but what archaeological digs uncovered inside them were much more impressive. The Native American site in southwestern Ohio had obsidian from the Yellowstone National Park area, mica found in North Carolina, and shells from the Gulf Coast. These Native American societies were very advanced with extensive trade routes. Native American trade spanned the continent. The next culture chronologically was the Mississippians. They were also part of the mound builders that the Poverty Point, Adena, and Hopewell cultures belonged. The Mississippians were responsible for Cahokia, the major city of the Mississippian culture that contained Monk's Mound, the largest earthen mound in North America whose base is larger than that of the Great Pyramid of Giza. I am drawn to the Mississippian culture because I live in southwestern Virginia, where there are two mounds within a few miles of my house. I was able to visit the dig site of one of those mounds by Dr. Myers of the University of Mississippi. The mounds close to my home was a kind of frontier settlement for the Mississippians at Cahokia. That is what Dr. Myers was explaining to me. They made trade goods from the material available to them in southwestern Virginia and sent it back to the Mississippi River. When we think of the past, we do not need to think of less sophisticated people. Our ancestors were resilient people that had an advanced system of trade, society, and politics. I encourage everyone to go and visit these historic sites and learn about the past. Thank you all, and I'll see you soon.